Now let's examine infant motor milestones. The development of voluntary movements for an individual during infancy follows an orderly sequence. The precise timing or order may vary slightly from one individual to another, but typically infants follow a common pattern of motor skill acquisition during infancy. We can think of this common pattern as a sequence of motor milestones, which are the fundamental motor skills associated with the attainment of later voluntary movements. For example, in order to walk, the infant first needs to stand independently. In order to stand independently, the infant needs to hold his or her trunk upright. In order to hold his or her trunk upright, he or she needs to first hold his or her head upright. We can think of motor milestones as landmarks, or turning points in the individual's development. The sequence of motor milestones was observed and documented by many researchers in the 1920s to 1940s, including Bailey, Shirley, Gazelle, and McGraw. The sequence of motor milestones is related to predictable changes in individual constraints, including the development of the central nervous system, muscle strength and endurance, posture and balance, and sensory processing. Although original norms or timelines were developed more than 80 years ago, these norms are still valid, with few changes in the timing and acquisition of major motor milestones. These are four examples of motor milestones. The table shown here provides the corresponding average age and age range for the acquisition of each milestone. The full list of motor milestones, as defined by Bailey or Shirley, are presented in Table 2.6 in the book. The top left image is of an infant that is able to lift her chest and head from a prone position. The average age of acquisition, based on Shirley's sequence, is 2 months. The top right figure shows an infant rolling over. The average age of acquisition based on Bailey's sequence is 6.4 months with an age range of 4 to 10 months. The bottom left figure shows an infant sitting independently. The average age of acquisition is 6.6 months with an average range of 5 to 9 months based on the Bailey sequence. In comparison, the age of acquisition based on the Shirley sequence is 7 months. Lastly, the bottom right figure shows an infant standing while holding furniture. The average age of acquisition is 8.6 months with an age range of 6 to 12 months based on the Bailey sequence. In comparison, the age of acquisition based on Shirley's sequence is 9 months. As we discussed in lectures 1 and 2, individual constraints can act as rate limiters or controllers in the acquisition of different motor milestones. For example, in order to lift his or her torso off the ground when lying prone, the infant needs sufficient neck, back, and arm strength. Balance is often a rate limiter in the acquisition of motor milestones. For example, infants may not take first steps until two-footed standing balance is well developed. Because different systems like muscle strength, balance, and other systems develop at different rates, the rate of achieving motor milestones may vary. In addition to structural individual constraints, functional individual constraints like experience or environmental constraints like cultural practices can also influence the timing and sequence of motor milestones. For example, handling practices can speed up or slow down motor milestones. If a mother holds her baby for too long during development, the baby does not have the ability to develop the skill to hold his or her torso and head up independently. Some cultural practices may even prevent a particular modal milestone from occurring. In other words, a milestone may be skipped. An example of this is that in some cultures in which there is a dirt floor, parents may not want an infant to crawl on the floor because they may injure themselves or ingest dirt. So infants in that culture may skip crawling and may go straight from sitting independently to standing independently. As I just mentioned, balance is a rate limiter in motor development. In a moving room experiment, an infant or child sits or stands and looks at a picture or an object on a wall. The walls and ceilings of the room move and cause the infant or child to sway in response to that visual movement. The sway is caused by the infant or child thinking that he or she is moving rather than the room. This causes a conflict between the visual information and the somatosensory information. Infants and young children have a difficult time calibrating what they perceive in the environment, i.e., is the room moving? 
and what their internal body senses are telling them, i.e., am I moving? Across development, infants and children learn to calibrate sensory information with the appropriate motor response. This results in a reduction of sway and less reliance on external objects for mechanical support to maintain balance. We can use norm-referenced assessments like the Bailey Scales of Infant Development, the second edition, which charts an infant's abilities in the areas of cognition, language, motor, and social behaviors with respect to an infant's age-expected abilities. This type of assessment is useful in determining if an infant falls below his or her age-expected abilities and whether or not an intervention is necessary. We may also use motor milestone charts to determine an infant's successful acquisition of motor milestones as a marker for typical and atypical development. This can help us determine if an infant is delayed or different in the pattern and timing of these motor milestones. Since movement is critical for an individual to interact with his or her environment, delays in motor milestones can cause delays in cognitive, social, and brain development. Many researchers have investigated early motor delays in different developmental disabilities. Here we'll talk about the take-home messages from a few studies. Infants with Down syndrome are found to have low muscle tone, or hypotonia, which is a rate limiter to the acquisition of many motor skills during infancy. The movement difficulties exhibited by an infant with Down syndrome can not only significantly impact future motor development, but also can negatively impact cognitive and social development. Ulrich and colleagues use treadmill training to practice the stepping reflex and build muscle strength in infants with Down syndrome. This treadmill training improves the onset and quality of independent walking in infants with Down syndrome. We also see motor delay in infants with cerebral palsy. Allen and Alexander in 1994 examined the performance of six motor skills during infancy in 173 preemies that were high risk for cerebral palsy. The specific skills were roll prone to supine, roll supine to prone, sit with support, sit without support, crawl, and cruise. They found that they could predict cerebral palsy based on a 37.5% delay from one evaluation to the next of each of these six skills. To help address the motor delays and promote cognitive, social, and brain development in those with cerebral palsy, Galloway and colleagues used robots and adapted motorized cars to enable those with movement impairments like cerebral palsy to interact and move in their environment. Let's watch a quick video of Dr. Galloway talking about this program of research. Our project is babies driving robots, babies and robots together. Um, and that usually brings some, some interest because babies and robots don't supposed to go together. Are you drinking thirsty? What we focus on in our lab is um, trying to maximize the exploratory ability of kids with significant impairments like cerebral palsy. And um, as infants and toddlers grow up, they grow up fast, they're moving, thinking, talking, interacting with the environment. The kids I see with cerebral palsy have mobility problems that short circuit that. They don't um, crawl when they should, they don't get up and walk when they should, they don't play in the playground when they should, they don't cause havoc at home like they should. Two and three year olds shouldn't be sitting still passively. They should be causing havoc. They should be putting bananas in the DVD player. They should be getting in trouble in grocery stores. And so I'm a creator of bad behavior. I'm trying to get toddlers with significant brain impairments up and going again. When we look at kids in school classrooms, like we're here in the Early Learning Center, when we use this center to look at how mobility and immobility specifically impacts a child's ability to learn and socialize with peers, what we see is a striking difference than typical. What we provide is power mobility devices and abilities for kids to rapidly, starting at six months of age, become mobile again. So very quickly in their life, instead of waiting until three, four, and five years to get your first power mobility device, we've devised um, small robotic devices that get you driving at six months. I get phone calls from parents who have our robots at home saying literally, 
you've created a monster. And then they say, thank you very much. When with a tear in their eye, they say, I didn't realize what I was missing until I said my first come back here right now. The barriers aren't big. We can do this. We can close it. Um, and those thousands and thousands of kids every year in the U.S. and hundreds of thousands of kids worldwide can have mobility. And if you want a test of like how bad mobility could be, this weekend go put yourself in a corner and duct tape your mouth shut for Saturday and Sunday, and you'll call me with a check because you'll go, I didn't realize how critical my mobility, how easy my mobility is. Um, so it's just that, that subtle shift in thinking. I think, I think we'll get it. Okay, let's sum up what we've learned in this chapter. First, we discussed the development and potential function of prenatal movements. We then examined the different postnatal infant movements, including spontaneous movements, reflexive movements, and voluntary movements. We discussed how we can use motor milestones to understand the sequence and timing of movement patterns in both typical and atypical development. And lastly, we discussed a few research studies that have examined motor milestones in those with developmental disabilities and have created interventions to improve the quality and onset of the acquisition of these motor milestones.